Hi YouTube, and this is JTrain997, and I'm back this time with my review of the Chicken Fry Toys Dime Novel Legends Badlands Vigilante figure. I get a good look at him here in the packaging. Um, this guy is brand new. Uh, this was on Kickstarter way back in 2016, and I just got mine in the mail. I did pick up the entire series, so you guys will be seeing a review of the entire series and all its bonus contents. Uh, this guy is a little bit special because he was exclusive to the Kickstarter. Him and I believe, uh, yeah, the Trooper are the only two figures which were exclusive to the Kickstarter. And they said it would not be reprinted. All the rest will once they sell out. Um, of course, you can see in the package here, his accessories are actually bagged up behind him. He comes with a base, a revolver, his hat, and I believe a rifle with a paint job that's exclusive to him. Over here you can see the kind of tin type they've done of his face. Very nice packaging. Age is 25 and up. So you see the other characters in the wave. Down here his reader says, When the dastardly deed doers slip through the fingers of the marshal, the Badlands vigilante steps in. Willing to do what the marshal and his crew can or won't, he takes justice into his own hands, delivered from the barrel of his trusty silver six gun. And you've got a company, a little bit of a read-up about the company, and a thank you to just a lot of the people that worked on it. It says Wave 1 limited to 1,500 pieces. So, not too much else to say about the packaging. Let's open him up. Hey guys, before we get on to the actual review, I did want to take a second and mention I am on the Facebook group for Chicken Fried Toys and the Dime Novel Legends. I'll actually link that in the description box below. I definitely recommend checking that group out if you like these guys. The reason I'm making this point is this little uh, addendum before the review starts. There was an issue with some of the arm joints that came from the factory, and they are recommending that when you open these, you get really hot water and give your arms a quick dunk. That way, whatever joints may have frozen up in the arm free up really quick, and that just prevents any breaks, anything like that. So that's just a quick precaution. Make sure you dunk these arms in hot water before you take off, and let's move on to the review. And here we have the Badlands Vigilante out of packaging. Now real quick, an accessory I didn't mention because I forgot about it. He also comes with his little sheriff's badge, marshal's badge, whatever you want to call it. This teensy tiny little piece of silver here. It's actually the back, if I can flip it around. Uh, they don't put it on the figure. They want you to be able to put the star wherever you want it. So it's just a tiny little piece, so it's a little bit easy to lose. I'm guessing you just dab a little bit of glue and stick it right on. It's not 100% though, but this guy looks fantastic. Um, this is one of the guys that really sold me on investing in the Kickstarter, because at first I'm like, yeah, do I need to be given the money? But I don't know. I love the Lone Ranger, and I get it. This guy's not the Lone Ranger. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. But this is a great looking figure. And you can see he's got his rifle there in his hands. He's actually got his finger through the trigger guard, the whole nine yards. Very, very nice. So let's actually pull his hat off here. The hat's very nice. You can see it's got a little tan band. It's kind of hard to see in the light, but there's a little tan band going around the rim of the hat. Bring that off here. His rifle, which we'll pull out of his hands. As you can see here. Now I've been told that this is this paint job, not this rifle, but the paint job on the rifle is exclusive to just this figure. The rifle is reused with others, but it's in a different shade of paint. As you hear it's got some gold on the breech, silver on the lever. Very nice. He's also got his six gun in his holster here, which pull right out, slips in and out. And to be so small, there's a lot of really nice detail on it. I mean, there's a little, I mean, I expected like a flat paint, but the grips have this really nice, almost pearl white. The silver's a nice, like bright, shiny shade of paint. Very nice. And what I love about these figures is um, they've left their hand, their trigger finger, separate from the rest of their palm. So when you put a weapon in their hand, we'll just put his revolver in real quick, you can actually put the trigger finger through the trigger guard for a much better pose. So that's fantastic. So let's actually go on to the base here. All of the Dime Novel Legends have the exact same base. 
Uh, there is a 50-50 chance you either get this kind of tan desert or a red. You see it's the rooster with the two six guns. You've got three foot pegs. Get him back on here. He sits very nicely on it. There, just now, on to his detail. You can see there, when I first got this guy out of the package, I started to look around, I thought that the, uh, there was some damage to the head skull, but it's not. It's supposed to be his hair poking through the back of his mask here, and I really love the detail on the mask. Well, most people would have just slapped a little black coat of paint over his eyes and called it a day. You can actually see they sculpted in the lines of, like, the bandana being pulled back and taut, the hair is coming out. That is a really great little detail on um, his bandana, of course. Almost all the gear on this guy is removable. You can see his vest pops open there if you wanted to take it off, which I, of course, don't. A very nice shade of blue on his jacket. As you can see, his little every bullet on his uh, ammo belt there is actually colored silver, which is a really neat little detail, you know, something you wouldn't even see. Of course, his spurs are both co um, covered silver, co colored. I'll learn to talk one of these days, colored silver, which is a very nice little touch, you know. And that's one of the things I like about this. You can tell this came from a Western. You know, this line is from a bunch of guys who love Westerns because little details like that that really make the figure are definitely addressed. As far as his articulation, the Badlands Vigilante does a full 360 at the head. You gotta kind of watch his bandana, but it's not hindering anything. His arms are on a ball joint. They go... Well, they're a little bit stiff. Uh, go out to about here. Again, be kind of gentle with the arms because there was a small issue as I addressed earlier in the video. So, bend at the elbow as well as spin. Spin at the wrist. The actual torso art admin articulation, I don't believe there's any. I believe it just turns at the waist, which is a bit hindered on this particular figure because of how uh, massive his coat is. Close his vest there. His legs go forward, back to about here, out, are double jointed at the knee, and have an ankle joint. So that's a surprisingly nice range of articulation for these guys. Let's go on to a quick size comparison. And here we have the Badlands Vigilante besides Heart Wrencher from the G.I. Joe series and besides Grim Reaper from the Marvel Legends line. Mainly because these two are the only figures I had on hand near me for each other's scale. So as you can see, he fits in very well with other three and three quarter inch figures. You can see how he stacks up next to six inch figures. So at the end of the day, this line is brand new once again. The Badlands Vigilante was exclusive to the Kickstarter, which is kind of a shame because he's so cool. Again, I get that uh, we can't call him the Ranger, even though we know who he is. But this is a great figure. I love the paint detailing. I love all his accessories. You know, I would show you guys me putting on the star, but I'm gonna level with you. I'm extremely OCD, so that's probably gonna be something I fret over for a while before I finally break down and do it. Right now, there are a few people putting this guy on eBay. He's getting very pricey very fast, but I absolutely love him. There is a certain way you can kind of come up with another almost classic Ranger, comparing uh, with some of the little extra spare pieces these guys are making, their buckaroo blanks, if you will, which I'll also be doing a review of. But that being said, this is JTrain997. This is a great start to a line I already dig, and I'll see you soon, YouTube.